Welcome back designers. In today's tutorial, I will be revealing several tips and tricks for you to pass the Adobe InDesign certification test. I passed it several days ago with a score of 824 and I'm ready to reveal several of the skills you're going to need to know in order to pass as well. These skills are going to be inspired from the 2023 version. If you're interested in other versions of the test, please check out my playlist in my channel below. You can also check out several of my curricular content on TeachersPayTeachers.com. The link will be provided in the description bar of this video. Without further ado, let's get started. In this tutorial, I'm going to be reviewing several different design skills that you're going to need to know in order to pass the second half of the test. The second half of the test presents several different design tasks and your job is to complete those tasks using InDesign. One of the tasks had you organize the existing sub layers within a document into two specific layers, one for images and one for text. In order to do so, I'm going to go to the Windows menu at the top of my workspace. I'm going to select Layers, and I'm going to click on the little arrow next to Layer 1 to expand it. Layers within InDesign are very similar to layers within Illustrator in that they hold multiple objects within one layer. So you can see within just layer one, I have seven different objects. Four of them are text and three of them are linked images. So what I want to do is create two separate layers, one for text and one for images. To create a brand new layer, there's two ways that you can do it. You can either click the little plus sign at the bottom of the layers panel or you can click on the horizontal bars on the top right hand corner of the layers panel and select new layers. On the test you might be asked to label the layer with a specific color or a specific title. I'm going to leave the color at the default which is red and I'm going to call this layer images. Then I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to select each of the image sub layers and I know their image loves layers because they're linked and they come from pexels.com so the description says pexels. I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and click on each of the layers so that they're all selected simultaneously. I know they're selected because they're highlighted in blue and then I'm going to go and drag them up to the brand new layer I created called images and I know as I'm dragging them that they're going into the correct destination because there's a white horizontal line right below. When I release and I expand the image layer, you'll see that all of the links for those images are now neatly contained under this layer called images. That leaves layer one, which contains these four text layers. So I can literally just go double click on layer one and give it a different name, which I'm gonna call text. And that is it. That's how you would fulfill that particular simulation question. You would just take each of the layers, organize them into two different groups, one for text, one for images. Another design task involving the layers panel in Adobe InDesign had you group three images and name the group. This is a really simple task to complete. The first thing that you need to do is select each of the images. You can use your selection tool, which is tool number one in the toolbar, and you can drag a marquee over each of the images to select them all simultaneously. You can also hold down shift on your keyboard and click on each image that you want to group. Once all three images are selected, you're going to right click on your images and select group. That's the first half of the question. It's telling you to group them. But then the second half, you have to actually name it. To name it, you need to have the Layers panel open. So you go to Window and Layers. I'm going to expand Layer 1. And I can see that within Layer 1, I have the text that says Popular Dogs and then the group underneath it. To rename the group, you have to double click on the group name and then type in whatever name the test is asking for. So I'm going to type in Dogs and press Enter to save my changes. And that is how you would answer that particular simulation question. There are multiple questions on the Adobe InDesign certification test 
that had you either create object styles or modify existing object styles. Object styles are basically formatting options that allow you to apply the same formatting to multiple objects within the same document. So as you can see, both of these image frames have been formatted with a very thick green stroke around them and a very subtle drop shadow. So if I had, let's say, 100 frames, I could literally create an object style and apply the same object style to all 100 frames to speed up my editing process. Regardless, one of the questions had you modify an existing style and change it so that each image filled the frame proportionately. So as you can see with these two images, they're far too large and you can't see the entire image inside of the elliptical frame. So we're going to edit that by modifying the existing style. The first thing that I need to do is use my selection tool to drag a marquee over both of the image frames. Once they're both selected, I'm going to open the Styles menu by going to Window, Styles, and Object Styles. I can see that an existing object style called Dogs has been applied to these frames, so I'm going to double click on them. And within the basic attributes, if the question asks you to, for example, change the fill or change the stroke, you could go and do so by selecting either of these options here. But for now, the only one that I'm interested in in is called frame fitting options so I'm going to select it and I can see that the fitting has been set to none which means that the image is going to continue appearing extremely large so I can go and click the drop down menu and change it from none to fill frame proportionately then click OK. Having done so you will now see that each of the images fills the frame a little bit nicer and you can actually see what the image is and it's no longer pixelated. So again, in order to modify any of the existing object styles, you basically have to go double click on it and look for the attribute that it's asking you to change. A similar question on the InDesign certification test had me modify an existing layer style by removing the border of that style and applying an effect to it instead. Again, in order to modify any of the existing layer styles, all you have to do is select the objects that have those layer styles applied to them. So I'm using the selection tool once again and dragging a marquee over each of these frames that have the very thick red outline around them. Then I'm going to go to Window, Styles, and Object Styles. And I can see that an effect called Frame has been applied to each of these three frames. So that if I want to go and remove the border, I can literally just go and deselect the option that says stroke, or I can go and select the stroke to none. And then to apply a drop shadow for each of the frames, I can go right here where it says effects for and select drop shadow. On the test, it might have you maybe edit the size of the drop shadow, adjust the opacity or whatever. So you would basically go and change each of the settings to whatever the test is asking for. I'm going to assume for the sake of this demo that I'm going to leave it at the default. So I'm going to click OK and you'll see that the frames will no longer have that big red border around them and they're now going to have this very subtle drop shadow underneath them. One last task having to do with object styles had me change the color and the stroke of a specific style and then apply it to several different objects throughout the InDesign document. So you can see that a style has been applied to this ellipse, which is giving it a fill of bright RGB yellow and then a thick black stroke. So we're going to edit that style by going to Window, Styles, and Object Styles once more. I can see the style is called Sticker, so I'm going to double click on it. And I'm going to click on the fill. And let's say I'm going to change it from bright yellow to RGB red. And in addition to changing the fill, I'm going to click on the stroke and I'm going to lower it from 20 points to 5 points and click OK. So now the style has been altered. To apply that same style to these two ellipses, I can use my selection tool, drag a marquee over the two ellipses, click the style called sticker, and presto, it's that easy. So get familiar with object styles because you guys are going to see multiple questions having you create them or edit them on the InDesign certification test. One simulation question that I remember quite fondly because it was so easy 
had me eliminate the unused colors from the swatches panel. So in this document, you can see that I'm only using three colors. I'm using this really pretty cyan for these three hexagons, the yellow for this hexagon, and then a black stroke around each of them. So essentially what they want us to do is to eliminate any other swatches that are not presently being used on this document. To do so, you can go to Window, Color, and swatches if you don't have the swatches panel open already. If I expand the swatches panel I can see a full range of RGB colors listed underneath in addition to the ones that I'm using within this document already. To get rid of the colors that you're not using you can click on the horizontal bars on the top right hand corner of the swatches panel. You can select the option that says select all unused and it's going to highlight all of the swatches that are not presently being used in the document. And then from here, to get rid of them, all you have to do is click the little trash can icon at the bottom of the swatches panel, and they're gone. It's literally that easy. Another super easy question had to display the document in preview mode. Preview mode means that the guides, the rulers, and the margins would not show, but that your tools would still be active. The official way to present your document in preview mode would be to go to the view menu at the top of your workspace, select screen mode, and select preview. When I click on preview, I can basically just see these image frames floating on a pristine white page, and I'm no longer able to see the guides or anything like that. A faster way to do it that would let you see your document in preview mode would be to click W on your keyboard. And clicking W allows you to shift from editing to preview mode very easily. For the purposes of the certification test, however, I would recommend doing it the long way by going to View, Screen Mode, and Preview. Another easy simulation question how do you swap two pages? So basically moving the snow dogs to the right hand side of the spread and moving bully dogs to the left hand side of the spread. In order to do so, you need to have your pages panel open. I can see that I have two facing pages and I need to move the content in page two over to page three. So all I have to do is click on page two and when I click on it, you guys are gonna see that the page is now highlighted in blue and then drag it. And when I drag it over to three, there's like an itty bitty little square showing next to my cursor so that when I release, it's going to swap my pages automatically. Again, super easy question to answer for the certification test. You just need to ensure that you guys are doing the right pages. So pay attention to the page numbers at the bottom of the pages panel, because on the certification test, you're not going to get just two pages. You're going to have multiple to select from within one document. Lastly, you may also expect to see some questions having you edit typographic content and add some interactive elements as well. One of the questions specifically had you create a hyperlink to part of the text on the document. So we're going to practice that today with a line of text that says bully dogs. I'm going to use my type tool and I'm going to highlight the text that says bully dogs and I'm going to create a made up hyperlink for this text. To do so, I need to open up the hyperlinks panel by going to Window, Interactive, and Hyperlinks. Then right over here where it says URL, you can basically go and copy and paste whatever website they give you on the test. For right now, I'm going to make it up completely. I'm going to type in www.bullydogs.com. And then to make the hyperlink active, I'm just going to press Enter to save my changes. Now I could test out this particular URL. I can see it's not available because again I just made it up by just clicking on this little dot and it tells me whether it's active or not. But again, you're not going to be asked to necessarily test the URL. You're just going to be asked to create the URL on the certification test. And that's how you would do it. That's how you would add interactive content to a specific block of text. Finally, you may expect to see a question that's going to ask you to convert a text layer to an editable path. 
What that means is you're taking an existing text layer. I know this is a text layer because when I click inside of it, I can see that the type tool is activated and in my properties panel, I have the ability to change the font, the size, and so forth. But you're going to be asked to convert it into an editable path, which would disable any of these typographic editing options and basically convert the text layer into a shape. You might do this, for example, if you have a very stylized font and you want to share a document with someone else without them having to install that font to their computer. So in order for you to go and take this text and convert it into an editable path, you would just need to select it. And I know it's selected because I have this blue bounding box around it. Then you would go up to the type menu at the top of your workspace and you would select the option that says create outlines. Once you create outlines, you have the ability to edit this text similar to how you would edit a shape. And if I go to the properties panel, I can see that I have the appearance options such as the fill and stroke. But now because I converted this into a shape, I cannot edit the font or any of those typographic settings anymore. Well, my friends, we have come to the end of the tutorial. I sincerely hope that the 10 tips and tricks that I shared with you earlier are useful in helping you to prepare and pass the Adobe InDesign certification test. If you're working with students and you would like access to several of the practice files that I was using earlier, I recommend that you check out my Teachers Pay Teachers store called Designed to Perfection. In this store, I have multiple study guides to help you pass several different Adobe certification tests. Most recently, I published a study guide for Adobe InDesign that you can see right here. When you click on the study guide and purchase the product, you're able to download a PDF formatted file with linked practice files and linked video tutorials that students can download and follow along to independently to practice several of the skills they may expect to see on the Adobe InDesign certification test. So if you're interested, I'm going to leave a link to my Adobe InDesign certification test practice, as well as to my store in the description bar of this video. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or any suggestions for future videos. Until next time, I wish you guys a happy new year. Peace out.